What was the scariest, creepiest, or most unsettling experience of your life? 15 years old. I'd just got home from work, so I went to my bedroom to change out of my work clothes and get ready for bed. I'm in the middle of undressing when I look to my bedroom window to catch my reflection, and I see a man's face. I drop to the floor and turn off the lights, scrambling to get dressed, still watching the window. The face is gone, but I'm still watching. Then, a freaking camera. No face, just a camera pointed at me sitting on the floor. I bolt from my room and tell my mum and brother. My brother went outside and our ladder from the backyard was just laying there, but nobody around. Couldn't sleep for a year after that, just stared at that window. Haven't thought about this in years until now. When I was around 16, my rapidly growing family finally moved from the house I'd spent my entire life in. As you'd expect, we spent a lot of time fondly remembering things we used to do in the house as we were packing everything up. At some point, I decided to go into the downstairs closet with a flashlight and read, something that I'd used to do when I was younger to get some peace and quiet. Now, this is one of those very deep closets that goes under the stairs. It went back about eight feet and then had a left turn into a very low, maybe three foot high space. This space was largely occupied by a mountain of old blankets and stuffed animals. Of course, this is the most fluffy spot to sit in and read. About an hour in, I shift a little to get comfortable, and I hear a low, slow, warped, hoarse voice say, You'll always make me happy. I flipped my crap, hit my head on the low ceiling, and practically broke the door down getting out. After hyperventilating and explaining to my family why there was no color left on my face, I went back to see what it was. It was my stuffed little bear from when I was three or four years old that I happened to lean on just right to press his belly. But when I pressed on his stomach again, though, nothing. That poor bear I hadn't played with since I was a toddler used the last of its power, used its dying breath, to tell me I made it happy. You make me happy too, little bear, when you're not making me wet my pants. When I was a teen, I worked at a cable access studio and made mini-movies. My neighbors gave me their father's old video camera. They told me he never used it, but it didn't seem to work anymore and had a tape jammed in it. I fixed it up and on the tape was hours of him driving around at night and filming people through their windows. There was nothing overly adult-rated on it, but there is something unsettling about seeing peeping Tom footage of a guy eating dinner with his family or over 20 minutes of some girls dancing around in their room. That is incredibly creepy and I can't help but wonder if any of the footage was from the person from our first story. Probably not, but crazier internet coincidences have happened. I was watching scary movies and I got hungry, so I decided to go out for a late night Taco Bell run. I lived alone at the time, so it was quite a shock as when I opened the door a hand was reaching in after me. I slammed the door on the offending arm and ran and grabbed a butcher knife. After closing all the blinds and sitting in the dark for an hour, I worked up the nerve to look outside. I was shocked to find a bunch of Chinese food menus for a new restaurant scattered all over the ground. My brother and I were probably about seven and five, respectively. We used to wake up every weekend and play computer games before my parents woke up. One day, we turned on the computer and got an eerie message that was directed to us. It said, Hello, Sam and James. This is your computer talking, and I am alive. Do not run and tell your parents. They cannot help you now. Turns out my dad had programmed the computer to say that upon starting. This was mid-90s. When I was about seven to eight years old, my family rented a house close to the beach for a week. The drive wasn't very long, but as an eight-year-old, by the time we got there, I really had to feed the porcelain stallion a brown bone. We pulled into the driveway and are met by a middle-aged woman who owned the house, and showed us the place and told us about the town and what to do. My first instinct is to find the bathroom, so I ask and she tells me it's the second door on the right after the kitchen. Go inside and open the bathroom door to an older guy just standing there looking at me. I kinda duck my head down, say sorry, and went back outside. They noticed I was back pretty fast, and I told them that there was someone in the bathroom already. That's when it got weird. The lady looked at me confused and said there's no one else in the house. I explained that I definitely saw someone in the bathroom, and after searching the house we find no evidence of anyone else being in there. After a while, the lady told us her dad owned the house and lived there and recently passed away. She inherited the house and wasn't sure what to do with it, so she'd started renting it out. I'm pretty sure I saw her dad. This is the story of how a creepy encounter with a scary man at a harbor cafe saved me from something even more terrifying. It was in the autumn of 1994, and I was 19 years old. At the time, my dad had been working for almost six months abroad, and I was planning a surprise visit. My dad and I have always been close. I'm an only child, and my mother passed away from cancer when I was still a baby. So it was just my dad and I, a really tiny little family. But he made up for it by being the most awesome parent ever. 
Now that I wasn't a little kid anymore, I appreciated that more and more. I had booked the ticket and was ready to go. It was going to be great fun to surprise him with a visit. I had to take the ferry though and had just gotten my driving license and felt really unhappy about having to drive my little car on board the ferry and decided not to bring the car at all and just rent one once I got there. Having time to spend, I decided to have coffee at a nearby cafe, since I was early and they hadn't started telling people to go onto the ferry just yet. At the cafe, there were lots of truck drivers and I soon realized I was the only woman there. One man, a 40-ish bloke with ice blue eyes and tattoos all over him, was eyeing me from across the room. Something about him made my skin crawl. I got up to leave, feeling suddenly very uncomfortable, and to my utter horror, he followed. What do I do now? I asked myself. This was before everyone owned a cell phone, I might add. I decided to try and look busy and maybe he'd leave me alone. So I pulled out my ticket and tried to look like I was reading it carefully when he suddenly snatched it from my hand and said, I'm on the same boat. I'll have hours of your company then. How lovely. In a voice that was an absurd combination of jovial flattery and hidden hostility. I felt very strongly that if I got on the boat with this man who now knew my booking details, I'd be in grave danger. I can't explain why the feeling was so overwhelming, but it was, and I decided then and there not to get on the boat. The ticket had been cheap anyway, I could get on the next one instead. I hid in the ladies' room until I knew the ferry had left and then I went to rebook my ticket. The story could have ended there, a creepy encounter with a stalkerish man, but it doesn't. I was right in the assumption that getting on that ferry would have been unbelievably dangerous. Have you figured out the date yet? The date was September 28th, 1994, and the name of the ship was the MS Estonia. And that cold night, she sank in the Baltic Sea, taking 852 people with her, resulting in the worst ferry catastrophe to strike Sweden to this day. I still recall that day with horror and wonder what would have happened if this creepy man had not taken an interest in me. If I had not listened to my instinct and gotten on board, instead of waiting for the next boat. Would I have been among the survivors? Or would my dad have seen my name on the list of lives lost in the Baltic Sea? I worked at a movie theater selling concessions and this older man approaches the counter and orders. I ask him, would you like anything else? And he looks at me and says, Every time I ask for the thing I want, they keep telling me it's illegal. I'm quite creeped out by this guy, so I just sort of chuckle and then he proceeds to ask me, Do you want to know what I ask? Working in concessions, part of the job is making the moviegoers feel welcome, so I say, Sure. And then what he says to me was the most disturbing thing I've ever heard. He says, You wouldn't have any young girls in the back over there locked up for me. He said as he's pointing to the closet. He then continued, because that's all I really want, a young girl. I mean, I wish I could just bring them back here and you'd keep them locked up so I could just pick them up whenever I wanted. You know? At this point, a line had already started forming up behind him and it's still not paid yet. So I told him the total of his order and then he asked me, you understand, right? And I didn't know what to say, so I just chuckled and agreed. Then he pulled out a $10 bill and said, I like you, and put it into the tip jar and walked away. Ugh. Not to me, but to my sister. She and her first husband had just had their first child a few months prior. My brother-in-law was working the graveyard shift at his job as my sister stayed home taking care of my nephew. Around 2am she heard loud knocking on her back door. She went to go check it out and saw a lady banging on the door asking for my sister to let her in. The lady told my sister that her husband had just beaten her down the street and was looking for her. My sister was hesitant to let her in since she had a newborn in the house and didn't want to interfere. She told the lady that the best she could do was call the police for her. The lady told my sister to not call the police and to let her in. This is where my sister got suspicious. She went to get her phone and called 911. When she went to the back door, the lady was gone. The police arrived a few minutes later and they told my sister that the same situation happened a few streets down. Apparently, the couple would do this act to get into people's homes. I'm sure this is very common, but having it almost happen to my sister and nephew just creeps me out. Some real clockwork orange crap. Thank God for your instincts on that one. The gormless narrator who can't say no to people would probably have let her in no matter how worried he was. Cop here. I've posted this story before so it might sound familiar. I was dispatched to a house at about 1am for a prowler. We get there and talk to the residents. Long story short, they saw two people wearing masks. One Jason-style hockey mask and I don't remember the other. They'd seen them in the yard across the street. It was about two weeks past Halloween so it seemed believable. We check the area and don't see anything. 10 to 8. It's worth noting the residents don't seem drunk or high or crazy at all. A few times you'll get a similar call and get there to find the resident is strung out on crystal and seeing things. However, back to the story. An hour later we get called back. This time we have our dispatcher on the phone with them while we're surrounding the area. We, about five of us, are in a perfect position and dispatch tells us they can see the prowlers in the next yard. 
We start to move in. Dispatch says the residents saw the two prowlers wave and move into the shed. Guess where I am? That's right, next to the shed. I give verbal commands, bang on the door, and nothing. Screw it, fine. I'll come in after you. Doors open, and... empty. I even think to check for a trap door. Nothing. It's raised about four inches, so there isn't even a possibility of a door leading out. Again, check the area and find nothing. I talk to the residents. They said as I was moving in on the shed, the two put their fingers to their lips, giving the shush sign, and then they both waved. They moved into the shed as I was next to it. We went over every possibility trying to come up with an explanation. If the caller was just messing with us, they had no prior history of it, as in repeated calls for service at the address. I'm not much of a believer in paranormal stuff, but I can still appreciate a situation where I can't logically explain what just happened. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. One night, about 10 months ago, there was a pretty heavy snowstorm in my area. All of the roads were closed and a curfew was issued for everyone except emergency medical personnel. I'd been shoveling snow for most of the day and was dead tired come nightfall. Didn't have energy to do much of anything besides eat dinner and lay down. I fire up some OG Star Trek and begin to doze off. A couple of hours later, around 1am, I hear the sound of a door rattling and a slight whisper saying my name. I sit up a bit and realize it's coming from my parents' room, becoming fainter with the passing time. After 10 minutes or so, I gather up the courage to see what the heck is going on. Crappy folding knife in hand, I peek out into the hallway and I don't see anything. The noise is still coming from the room next door, the rattling becoming more rushed as I approach. Cautiously, I open the door and sneak inside. It's pitch black and I can't see anything. My eyes are taking entirely too long to adjust to the darkness. I'm shuffling forward and all of a sudden, something grabs and pulls on my leg. At this point, I was so freaked out, I jumped back. As the whispers continued, I recognized my dad's voice. He was asking me for help. He had a stroke while walking to use the bathroom around 1am that night. After he fell, he was able to use his left foot to rattle the door to his bathroom. My mum fell asleep on the couch in the living room and wasn't around to help or hear. I was able to grab the house phone and call 911, and despite the weather, the police and an ambulance arrived within 10 minutes. That was the scariest night of my life. The doctors told us there wasn't much hope for my dad before going into surgery since he had had a hemorrhagic stroke and there was a massive amount of internal bleeding. Fast forward 10 months and my old man is cognitively the same, just paralyzed on his right side. He had every infection under the sun while in hospital, but he staved them off and is still with us today. He was my best friend before the incident and my hero after. In conclusion, heard some rattling and whispers, freaked out, found my dad lying on the ground after a massive stroke. I was visiting my hometown and decided to pick up my old high school friend from his house and take him to dinner and a drink to catch up. He's kind of stressed and tells me that his ex, with whom he'd broken up with over two years prior, has been stalking him and harassing him. I drove him home afterwards and it starts to drizzle. As I drop him off at his house, the neighborhood was dark and quiet by now, we both notice a bag tied to my side view mirror. It was likely attached when we were at the restaurant. We open it to see a poorly taken photo of a tree taken at night with a flash. There was a brief letter, obviously written from his ex, that said, I buried our first love letter under this tree three years ago. This tree is growing from our love. I made sure my friend got into his house all right and got the heck out of there. When I was 16 in the mid-90s, aka the I know everything, I'm invincible and you can't stop me age, I got in a fight with an acquaintance while a whole bunch of us were hanging out at his house. Stupid fight, can't remember what it was about, but decided, screw it, I was going home. I lived about 5 miles away, but I didn't have a car, and since it was 2am, there were no buses. I was going to walk home. In the middle of the night, through a not-as-safe-as-it-seems neighborhood, as a tiny 16-year-old girl. So I did. I think in hindsight, my friends either didn't believe I was going to do it, or were too startled by the sudden argument to realize what I was doing. I left the house and started hoofing it. About a mile out, the suburban housing neighborhood melted into a main street with highway access. I started to notice a grayish minivan following me. It would follow me, pass me, turn a corner, and about three blocks later, it would do the same thing. I mean, really, really obvious what it was doing. I crossed over to the other side of the street, so I was walking the opposite of the traffic flow, and thus no car could come up behind me. I kept doing it on the other side of the street. About a mile later, there was a 24-hour Fred Meyer, West Coast USA chain grocery and all-purpose night store. Its lights were bright, but parking lot empty-ish. I immediately crossed the parking lot and went to head inside. 
Just before I got to the doors, the minivan that had been following me pulled up into one of the parking spots. A guy called out from the driver's side and said, I don't want you to walk over here, just stay there and listen. I just wanted to let you know what I was doing. I saw you walking a while back, but I also saw a dark car that was following you. A couple of times you went to turn around or stopped, so it started following you down a parallel side street. When I saw it, I started to follow you both just to make sure you were safe. Go inside the store and call someone to pick you up, please. I haven't seen the car since you headed across the lot. He waited until I was inside the store and then pulled away. I didn't have anyone to call, so I just let the night cashier know what was going on, and I hung out with her for about an hour and a half. Then I finished the walk home. I've never forgotten the incident, or that man, whoever he was. During the walk, I never saw the dark car he mentioned, but I've always been convinced he saved my life that night. I like to think that in this scary night, there was a comical situation of the van driver and the dark car driver seeing each other, thinking the other car was shady, and being equally protective about the kid in question, until the dark car driver lost track of them. Not as scary as the others, but it creeped me out nonetheless. I was out of town on business, and my security camera went off in the middle of the night. I checked it and I saw a blurry white light moving erratically in my room. Now, I'm half asleep in the hotel hundreds of miles away from home and I don't believe in ghosts, so my first thought was that someone was shining a flashlight into the house to case it. Not knowing what else to do and not wanting to call the police and look foolish, I used the two-way sound on the camera to yell, Get the F away from my house! I'm calling the police! The moving light didn't seem to react to that, so I just sat there, in my hotel room, watching it until it stopped. The next night it happened again. And the next. I've shown the footage to my colleagues and they're convinced I have a ghost. I asked the pet sitter to look around the house for prints in the snow and they found nothing. I finally got home and nothing is out of place, but now I realize that I have to sleep in this house with the weird moving light. So when the sun went down I was desperately trying to figure out what it was. Two days later I did. This is kind of hard to explain but bear with me. This was a very bad winter and I'd taken the internet's advice and thrown pantyhose filled with rock salt up into my gutters to prevent ice dams. The string hanging down from one of them had an ice crystal in it, so that little ice crystal was blowing in the breeze and reflecting the driveway lights back into the house. So, absolutely not creepy at all, but when you're away from home and see a floating orb in your house, it will give you the willies for sure. Back when I worked night shift as a security guard, I'd experience mild hallucinations due to my poor sleep schedule. I was doing my patrol and I was feeling particularly out of it, so I kept getting those flashes of movement in the corner of my eye. But I was convinced it was just my brain messing up. At the site I was working, there's a large warehouse filled with chemical waste that has only one light on in it. As I'm going along, I see a pale shape on the ground and quickly recognize it as a body. My adrenaline spikes and I nearly pass out. Upon closer inspection, it turned out to be a CPR dummy the workers left out for training. I was sitting in our office room, home alone, when I was 19. I was typing a paper for one of my college classes. The office room used to be my sister's room before she moved out, so a lot of her decorations are still there. She had a photo of a mountain range, an oval-shaped mirror, and three different hangings that read Faith, Hope, and Love. This makes five total things hanging on the wall in the room. Suddenly I got random chills, which happens all the time, it was pretty cold there. But this time, as soon as I got the chills, everything in the room hanging on the walls fell off simultaneously. This really freaked me out, but it got a tiny bit worse. I got up and walked out of the room only to notice everything hanging on a wall in my house had fallen besides the television in my room. All the pictures in the living room and the other rooms, all of the trophies in my room from Little League Sports and even a stand that held candles. I wasn't sure what to do. I picked up all the stuff and hung it back up, which actually took me around 15 to 20 minutes. Then I drove to campus to finish my paper. Never told my parents. It's also worth mentioning this happened around noon on a sunny day three winters ago. On a way to a camping trip, I passed by an old painted up car with decorations of Muppets and stuff on it. Obviously owned by a crazy person who couldn't drive over 50 miles per hour. Without stopping, we then passed the same car 40 minutes later. I work for an engineering college and frequently have to go up to the industrial floor to find old projects and materials that had been stored years ago. This is the floor with the HVAC unit, steam pipes and stuff, and is not very well lit in the evening. The year before I'd started working there, it was discovered that a homeless man had broken in and had been living up there. The cops had to be called because he had some kind of mental instability and kept coming back. Fast forward two years later and I'm up there looking for some pressure gauges when I see one of the fluorescent lights begin to flicker. My attention is drawn to that area, where I see the silhouettes of a body laying on the floor in the most uncomfortable position, and another one crouched in the corner against the wall. 
I nearly crapped my pants before booking it in the other direction, but then the light came back on and I saw it was two test dummies that the mechanical engineers must have stored there recently. I keep a length of pipe with me every time I go up there now. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.